why is it that we're focused so much on, on conflict minerals instead of all the other possible issues? Because certainly Congo is a very, very complicated war, a lot, of, a lot of different things. Bottom line is I think that everyone here agrees in our coalition is that the, the commercial, uh, you, you mentioned this cost-benefit analysis. I think that you know, in, in, the, in the context of blood diamonds, just like in the context of our conflict minerals issue, that's the key is violence in the east of Congo, the war in Congo will end only when the commercial dynamic, the profit motive for those that are carrying out these violent acts is altered fundamentally. As it stands now, this mafia-like economy that exists in, in eastern Congo, it rewards smuggling, it rewards violence, it rewards predation. And, and, it, and these are maintained through these, this massive uh, violence against civilian populations in order, uh, as a result of, of the various things we've already heard about. So until you change that logic of violent, unaccountable, illegal mineral extraction, until you transform that, um, all the peacemakers and peacekeepers in the world sent to the Eastern Congo are not going to change the, 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 the basic dynamic there. And I think that's what happened with respect to Sierra Leone and to a lesser extent Liberia and, and Angola when the blood diamond uh, situation was addressed finally globally. Um, and, and then maybe we can just close by talking a little bit about uh, how what legislation fits into the broader effort because blood diamonds was indeed, as Rory talked about, a, a campaign. And so what we're seeing slowly uh, develop, as Lisa was talking about, uh, is a campaign on conflict minerals. Um, we have a, certainly there is a consumer campaign that is that is that is uh, focused on uh, conflict-free electronics uh, uh, products, cell phones, laptops, and, and MP3 players, and the rest, um, uh, using social media, recruiting celebrities, uh, you know, to get them to do more. And we got some. We got to keep doing it. Yet have uh, uh, Leonardo-like commitment, but we'll get it. Uh, and, and then, of course, we have Lisa Shannon, who is her own category. And, uh, and, and focusing on the fact that if, if co consumers make conflict-free products, conflict-free cell phones and laptops, uh, part of their basic demands, just like green technology, just like fair trade products, like sweatshop-free clothing, blood-free diamonds, all these different things, the big companies with leverage, the electronics companies at the top of the food chain, will uh, place downstream pressure on, uh, on the suppliers along the way to clean up that supply chain and eliminate conflict from it. Um, we already seen companies start to respond. You know, when, when Senator Brownback and his colleagues first from uh, Senator Feingold and, and, and Senator Durbin's office first started uh, consulting about this bill, Congressional Quarterly says $15 million were spent by the electronics companies to try to stop it from being introduced. That was a year ago, or less than a year ago. Now, a number of the electronics companies are supporting some of the legislation, it's slowly, steadily getting there to, uh, as, they, as they change their, their views on this stuff and realize that this issue is not going to go away because of people like us in this room uh, uh, making noise about it. And now they're trying to develop an auditing system just for tantalum, not good enough, got to make it all of three Ts and, and gold, or else it's not going to work. But there's definite movement. So that's the consumer campaign. Secondly, we're all working with the administration, with the Obama administration, to uh, develop a conflict minerals policy in the context of a broader, more comprehensive Congo policy that focuses on ending the violence instead of just sort of managing the symptoms of it. And I think we're going to see a lot of action starting in early the, earlier the, early this summer. From the, from the Obama team on this issue. So stay tuned. Third, um, we're all working with the regional governments. I mean, they have to be part of the solution. We can't just try to slam this stuff down the throats of governments in the region. They've got to be part, they've got to come along, they've got to be part of it. And we're seeing movement by these governments, particularly by uh, Congo, Rwanda, to a lesser extent, Uganda. But we're going to have to have them at the center of this, and they're going to have, there's going to be, to be heavy pressure at times. And they're, again, unless that commercial dynamic is altered, uh, the smugglers in all those three countries are going to continue to do what they're doing. And they're all politically linked in with the regimes in the three countries. So, of course, they're all complicit in making tremendous amounts of money off of this trade. 
Um, it's a it's a uh, it's a it's a play it's a it's a situation that where in Kampala and Kigali and, and Kinshasa, where millions and millions of dollars are being made uh, in this in this sort of silent complicity around this deadly deadly trade. So we have to shine a light on that in some ways, but also include the the the, the regional actors. And they just had a conference themselves in Bujumbura, which was uh, uh, I think a very important step on the road to acknowledging what you're talking about earlier, this certification scheme for the blood diamonds, that that kind of, a, uh, of an end game is going to be necessary, but with real auditing and real uh, monitoring mechanisms, independent monitoring and auditing mechanisms built in. in. And so some, some are resisting, some are supporting. That, that the horse trading has begun, at least it's begun. It, a year ago it hadn't. So we're, again, we're seeing movement. Fourth, we're seeing the United Nations play. Uh, in the context of this panel of experts, which I think consistently over the last number of years has provided some of the best assessments and analysis, really shining a light on this mafia-like economy and trade and, and providing the information about these links directly into, right up to the state houses in Kinshasa, in Kinshasa Kampala, and Kigali, and then beyond to all these companies, these shady companies that are undertaking all kinds of transactions that ought to be illegal. And then, uh, and then all the way up the, the chain to our to the products we use every day. And then, most importantly, I think is the legislation. You know, by just introducing the bill, the the, the, the three senators and now so many uh, co-sponsors uh, helped catalyze, I think, some of the momentum I've just spoken about from the companies, from the governments in the region, from activists and, and consumers here in the United States, and particularly from the Obama administration, because no, I, speaking from experience, back in the administration I worked for, no administration wants to be beaten to the punch on a foreign policy issue by Congress. They will work harder simply to come out first before the Congress can, can, can make a move on this so they don't appear to be being pushed by the legislative branch to do anything. So this is very effective to have a freestanding bill like this, gathering momentum, getting co-sponsors, you know, every week we're getting new co-sponsors. So um, we're, we don't really go into details of the bill because it's this moment is in great flux, given the news that Senator Brownback just gave us. But I do want to say Congo's war will end uh, a good deal sooner, I think, uh, if legislation is indeed passed. He says he's on first base with one out. As a Kansas City Royals fan, that's the end of the inning. But hopefully, <laughs> you know. Uh, and he's a Royals fan too, sadly. Well, we're going we're to work on that metaphor. But, uh, but hopefully with some of the other teams in the league, you can actually score a run with that kind of situation. So, uh, but it isn't, it's not a given. You know, the, the, the run is not plated yet. So we really have a lot more work to do once the momentum starts to build. Steal a base, something, bunt, do something, for God's sake. Because I think of the great work of, of the, the, the senators and particularly of the staffers you know, that, that, are, that are working on these bills, the House and the Senate, we actually have a chance to make this happen in, in uh, 2010 to help, and then to, set the, to lay the groundwork to help end the, the deadliest war in the world. And I think whether we're elected officials, whether we're staffers for particular um, op, for different offices, whether we're NGO representatives, um, whether we're Congolese, um, we all have a voice. That's what we share and that's what we can contribute. And with that voice, we can speak out very clearly and say, not on our watch. Thank you very much.